I was recently inspired to make Ukrainian vodka. Can't imagine why. I just said, yes, man, I anything. All right, kids, today we're going to learn how to make Ukrainian vodka, or as it's called in the Ukrainian language, Orilka. Ukraine is pretty awesome, so I want to honor the strength of the Ukrainian spirit by making some strong Ukrainian spirits. Ukraine is actually the breadbasket of Europe and it produces a lot of the wheat that's consumed all around the world. So it makes sense that Harilka is very often made of wheat. But they also grow a lot of rye in Ukraine and some of the older recipes of Harilka were a mixture of wheat and rye. So today we're going to make a 50-50 mix of rye and wheat vodka. And luckily, I'm good friends with Kevin over at the Grain Bench channel on YouTube. A while ago, he sent me a whole bunch of malted wheat and a whole bunch of malted rye. I thought that would be a perfect use for this stuff, so that's what we're going to be using today. So if you want to see how Kevin made these grains, I'm going to put a link up here to some of his videos. I highly recommend you go over and check out his channel. He's very good at malting and also a super nice guy. Thanks, Kevin. All right, so first things first, the recipe. So Kevin sent me five and a quarter pounds of malted rye, and that's this much in kilograms. And uh, I think about eight pounds in uh, wheat, but I wanna do a 50-50 mix, so I'm gonna do five and a quarter pounds of rye, five and a quarter pounds of wheat. So it's not gonna be quite enough to have a really stout batch. Normally I like to do three pounds of grain per gallon of water. Um, so I don't have quite enough to do that, so I'm going to do probably four gallons and we'll just see what we end up getting. Since we're using rye, rye has a tendency to turn into glue in your pot. So we're going to do a stepped mash process to try and reduce that kind of gloopiness that comes out when the rye starts mashing. But don't worry, we'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to get all this grain weighed out and then go and grind it up in my uh, upgraded grinder. All right, so before we move on, I wanna say a big thank you to today's sponsor, Into the AM. They are a fantastic t-shirt company with some amazing graphics. Right now, they've got one of my favorites. This one was actually developed by Jesse and his Patreons over for the Stillet channel, so there's lots of little Easter eggs in here about this hobby, hypothetically. So if you wanna get this one or any of the other dozens of different graphic tees that they've got, check out the link in the video description below and I'll also pin it in the top comment. If you click on that link, you get my discount on everything and then if they've got a sale going on, you get another discount on top of that. And right now they've got a bundle sale going on through June for tank tops and in the first part of July through July 4th, they've got like 20% off of everything on their site. So. Definitely check them out if you need to get some t-shirts, underwear, cool hats, you know, anything that you want to put on your body that you'd also like it to feel good and look good. Link down below. All right, so now that I've got all of my grain ground up, I'm going to go ahead and start the mash process. And we're going to do a step mash where we gradually increase the temperature and we're going to stop along the way at a couple of different points in order to break up some of the uh, beta glucans and the proteins that can cause a lot of goopiness and stickiness with rye. Trust me, you don't want to skip these steps when you're using rye. If you do, you're going to end up trying to stir a pot of goo and it'll burn on the bottom and you'll be hating life. So here we go. I'm going to put the exact steps for it down in the video description down below. So check those out, refer to those notes. That way you don't miss anything in case you're fast forwarding through my video like always. Now raise the temperature to 132 degrees Fahrenheit and let it sit for another 30 minutes for a protein rest. All right, that's it, 132 degrees. Now we're gonna raise the temperature up to, I think about 150 degrees for the main mash and we're gonna let that run for at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I almost forgot one thing. 
So since this is a, a sticky mash and there's only so much you can do with uh, the rests, I got a big ass bag of rice hulls. And these are just the, the husks from rice grains and they don't deform, they don't lose their shape so that when you go to drain this, if you mix in a little bit of this, a little goes a long way, it'll actually help the liquid drain out a lot more easily so that you don't end up getting a stuck sparge so that your wort doesn't actually stick inside the grain, it helps it drain better. So I'm just gonna throw in about two handfuls of this. There's no specific measurement, just couple of fistfuls is all we need. So once your mash has been going for about an hour, go ahead and take some and do an iodine test on a sample of the mash. If it doesn't turn black, that means that you have fully converted all of your starches. So I finally got all of this strained into here. It was still really hot, so I added about a half a gallon worth of ice to cool it down to pitching temperature so that diluted it just a little bit so it was around like 1.073 ish and now it's about 1.069 on the hydrometer if it ferments out dry then we'll get about this much alcohol out of it so uh, let's go ahead and get this thing buttoned up for tonight because it is 1 30 in the morning good old distiller's active dry yeast couple tablespoons give or take we're all about accuracy here at uh, the old bearded and board emporium night night so now that the wash is finished fermenting and it's gone down as far as it's gonna go this one's gone down to 1.008 so not all the way down to dryness which is always a disappointment when you're trying to uh, ferment something for an eventual distillate Hypothetically. So, if you did want to distill this stuff, because it's so thick and it's so full of proteins and, you know, just whatever's making it nice and slick like that, it's probably a good idea to take a little bit of vegetable oil and put that into your boiler to make sure that uh, you don't have a foam up because you know, then it's gonna puke when you try to do your stripping run and all that stuff. So, a little bit of corn oil. Harilka is a pot stilled vodka and it doesn't need to be super, super clean like a normal vodka. So, you're not necessarily gonna do it with a column still unless you want to, that's up to you. So basically, you're gonna do a stripping run to take all of the alcohol out of your wash and then take that distillate that you make Put it back into your pot and then run it again and if you want it cleaner you can run it again and that will clean up the flavor over time and it'll also increase the abv but uh, old school traditional harilka has a little bit of that grain character left in it it's not a whiskey um, so you're not really pulling something from the heads or from the tails in order to catch grungy flavors that may be down in the tails or something weird that may be up in the heads. Uh, it's really just the hearts cut. And the hearts cut for most things can be really clean. So that's what we're going for. So I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of my Patreons. I uh, had some stuff come up and uh, it's really delayed my, my video schedule. I, I truly appreciate you guys sticking with me through uh, all this uh, thick and thin. You guys are absolutely amazing and thanks for interacting with all of my posts that I've been doing on Patreon. You guys are incredibly helpful. You guys are still keeping my lights on, so thank you. All right, so here's what happened with that wash. Before you ferment that sticky rye wash, it's very thick, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of slick feeling, almost like, um, I don't know, it's got a high viscosity. After it ferments, it's still pretty thick compared to anything else that you might do. Like a, a normal whiskey wash is gonna be watery. This is thicker than that. So if you're gonna take that wash and you're gonna run it through a still, you need to keep in mind that that higher viscosity can lead to scorching. So go slow. Even on your stripping run, I recommend that you go slow 
so that you don't end up scorching to the bottom, whether you're using electric elements or gas heat, doesn't matter. So here's what happened with our batch. Um, I sent it off to the liquor ferry and they were gonna run it in my, uh, in my small little mini still, just a couple of batches in the small little mini still. That didn't work because it is so thick that it puked. That's unfortunate because then you gotta start over. I suggested that the liquor ferry run it through an eight gallon still. So that's what they did. Low and slow for the stripping run, and then the low wines from that stripping run went into the small little mini still, the mini keg still, uh, for a nice low and slow spirit run. That worked out great. And the spirit came out around 78% for the hearts cut, and that was really, really good. But because it was a smaller batch, only about three gallons of wash, because uh, we lost a gallon to absorption in that uh, grain bed, I have one liter of Harilka. And that's fine. I wish I had more, but uh, you know, that's for, that's for another day. So I think we've all been patient enough. Let's go ahead and give this a taste. You know, right up front, you get that rye toasted bread crust. Not rye bread crust, but wheat bread crust. So I think I'm actually able to pick up both grains in there, which is not normal for my nose. FYI, this has been proofed down to about 43%. That's a pretty damn tasty vodka. Real soft on the mouthfeel, almost like velvet. There's a little bit of creaminess to it too. On the retro nasal, you get that caraway kind of uh, note to it, almost licorice-y. Little tiny bit of astringency, but not very much. That is really good. I can see why they like this stuff. You want to be able to taste some of that grain. Now, is this a real vodka? No, because it wasn't distilled to 96%, like the commercial standard. But um, it's vodka in this house. Let's do a little experiment. In, uh, in Ukraine and uh, lots of the surrounding area, when they have Horilka or uh, whatever other version of vodka in the region, uh, very often they'll have pickled something pickled vegetables, pickled fish, whatever. I don't have a whole lot of pickled stuff. In fact, I only have pickles. That's not a bad combo. Hmm, that's unexpected, and I have no way to describe that to give you any form of comparison other than to say a flavorful vodka goes pretty well with Pickled stuff. I have no idea why, but it's kind of cool. Here's an interesting thing. Here, when we're doing a shot or a drink or something or giving a toast, we say cheers. In Ukraine, they say budmo. And budmo literally translates to let us be or leave us alone. And I can't think of a more fitting toast for the Ukrainians. Budmo. <sighs> mm. With everything that's going on with Ukraine, um, if you would like to help out the people of Ukraine, I'm going to put a link down in the video description for you to check out. So if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit the like button because it really helps out the channel. I'm not bullshitting, I'm serious. If you enjoyed this kind of content and you wanna see more of it, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon right next to it, right down in there. And that way you'll get notified when I post new content. All right, thanks for watching. Talk at you later.